Hello everyone, Gebatron here. This video is all about anti-tank mines or AT mines in the game Hell Let Loose. I'm not going to go deep into how the AT mines damage armor here because update 10 may change this slightly other than to just say that trucks and light armor are usually destroyed by AT mines while medium and heavy armor can better withstand them although the mines do cause severe damage. Here is what each of them look like. On the left we have the US M1A1 AT mine and on the right we have the German Tellermine 43. So who has access to AT mines and how can you place them? Engineers with the standard issue loadout and AT rolls with the ambusher loadout both have access to AT mines. Simply select them from your inventory and place them by holding the left mouse button whenever the indicator turns green. Placement can be finicky so you may have to move around a bit. You can identify friendly mines in the HUD by hitting the T key. And here's what they look like on the map once placed. You can get more mines by re-upping at any explosives box. Note that you can only re-up one time from a single box. In order to re-up a second time, you will have to find a different box or have your support player replace the current box. You are able to have four AT mines down on the map at any one time. If you try to place a fifth mine, the first one that you had placed will despawn off the map, and so on. This leads me to my first tip. I call this mine memory. Every time you place a mine, take a quick look at the map to help you identify where it is. Remembering where you place mines will help you identify how many of your mines remain on the map later in the battle. This can also help you know whether it's time to intentionally despawn them or not. Not paying attention to this can lead to unorganized mine spam that may not be the best use of your assets or time. The whole point of laying mines in Hell Let Loose is to either destroy enemy assets outright, damage enemy assets making them less combat effective, or to delay the enemy from reaching the front line. So we want to increase the chances of the enemy actually driving over our mines. There are many ways we can do this. The first step is to identify and predict high traffic areas. How you do this will be dependent on a couple of different factors. The first will be general terrain. Maps like Hurtgen Forest and Hill 400 lend themselves very well to mine laying as there are few options for enemy traffic to flow. Traffic on these maps will likely stick to roads as straying off of them means getting stuck. Maps like Foy are much more open, meaning experienced enemy tank crews will often avoid roads to decrease their chances of running into your mines. So even if you are doing a good job of laying mines in high traffic areas, some maps are just better suited to mines and some are worse. So let's take a quick look at Hill 400 from the German perspective. All enemy traffic has to originate from one of the three enemy HQs. In this example, most of our strong points are in the center and southern parts of the map, which means for the most part we can rule out the northern roads. The majority of enemy traffic will be coming from the center and southern HQs. How you approach actually placing mines will depend on who controls the points. Here we lost the middle point, so the focus should be on roads leading to and passing near the train wreck. Here we gain control over southern approach, so we should focus on roads leading to it and from the church. Now that we've identified our high traffic areas, let's break it down a little further. While roads are great places for mines, there are two road features that are actually even better. They are crossroads and intersections. If you remember only one thing from this entire video, remember this. Crossroads and intersections greatly increase your chances of an enemy tripping your mines. Let's zoom in and talk about why. We'll focus on these three areas. Placing mines here means that no matter what choice the enemy makes, they have to cross your mines. In this first spot, we will get all the traffic coming from the church. If we were to place a mine slightly further back, we A. Decrease our chances by half because there is a 50% chance our enemy will take a different path. Or B. We will have to place two mines to do the same job. The same principle applies to our second location. Whether the enemy decides to go the northern route or the southern route, they have to pass our mine first. 
Our third location allows us to catch traffic coming from both the church and the Southern HQ. Placing a mine further up the road means we miss out on one or the other. On a map like Hill 400, these smaller roads are less likely to be traveled, so I would place mines at these intersections only as a second resort. Also, in this example, placing a mine up here on the main road is a good idea. Let's take a quick look at St. Mariglis where we have a great example of how a crossroads increases your chance of an enemy tripping your mine. Now we can put mines here or here. These work great because this area is an urban choke point, and we'll talk more about choke points later. But if we only have one mine to place, placing it here in the center of the crossroad means we not only get traffic coming from the west, but also any coming from the north. You cover two approaches of traffic with one mine. Remember, the most important tip to take away from this video is road intersections and crossroads increase your chances of a hit because they cover more more than one approach and they limit the enemy's ability to avoid your mines. Now let's go to Foy and talk quickly about choke points. So once again the best places here are your crossroads and intersections. But let's say these areas are already covered. The next best places are choke points. Now smart enemies will avoid the road on more open maps, but a lot of the time they will still go through some of these choke points in order to save a little bit of time. Here is a good one in the south as the trees will make it hard to drive around. Further up the road there are a lot of trenches west of the road and some obstacles east so traffic will still pass through here on the road itself. Same with where we are at right now so let's take a look at it from the ground. Here to the east there are trees so there's a good chance the enemy won't go that way. Here to the west, there are also some obstacles that the enemy may want to avoid. This is a decent area for a mine. But instead of putting the mine back here, where the road is wide, let's place it here, where the road is narrow, next to this destroyed field gun. Our mine is pretty visible, but trucks won't be able to avoid it here. Moving on to another good example of a choke point. We could place our mine here, but there is some room for vehicles to move to the left and to the right of it. Placing it between these two burnt out vehicles leaves our enemy no choice. There is nowhere to go to the right or to the left. The enemy has to either hit this mine or deal with it if they want to pass through here. I tend to put almost all of my AT mines on roads as it's almost impossible to predict traffic moving through open fields. But some maps, such as St. Marie Dumont here, have choke points in hedges that work well for mining. A good example being this location near the barn. Experienced armor crews like this little opening, and it's easy to see why. It directly overlooks the barn and has clear sight lines all around it. Putting a mine here is a great choice. Notice how I hide it in the grass versus putting it on the brown dirt, making it pretty hard to see. Choke points aren't as good as intersections and crossroads, but they are your second best choice. Now let's move on to what I call directing traffic. There is a place I like here in St. Mariglise called Western Approach. Here is what it looks like to the enemy coming into it. And here is what it looks like when I'm done building my gates. Notice how I don't close off the road completely. This will allow our assets to still pass through the area. I see this mistake a lot, but we'll cover that in a different video someday. The point here is that I'm forcing the enemy into a narrow and predictable path right over the top of my mines. Also, you'll notice that I was able to hide my mines under some of the mud and terrain on the road. Always try to do this if you can. These ruts and terrain features are usually even more common in intersections and crossroads, which is a bonus. Some maps this is easier to do than others, and it's also easier to do with the German Teller mine, so it's even more important to do this if you're playing as the U.S. 
While we are here, let's talk about spacing. Notice how I have these mines far enough apart that the explosion from one mine won't also trip the second mine. While you may want to have two mines right next to each other for targeting a heavy tank specifically, I tend to avoid it and spread my mines out unless I know for sure a heavy tank is approaching. I'll just touch briefly on how I play the different roles. Looking back at Hill 400, while playing the engineer role equipped with the AT mine, I tend to be active on the friendly side of the front lines, while when playing at the AT role with the ambusher loadout, I tend to operate more behind enemy lines. But this is situational. Also, keep in mind that the way you approach finding high traffic areas and where you want to mine may change slightly depending on game mode. For example, here on this Utah Beach US offensive map, I would spend my time mining the approaches to win 4 and Chapel rather than trying to mine the approaches to win 5 and AA battery, as they will likely be active. Mining while under fire can be difficult and can lead to poor mine placement, not to mention that this specific example, Win 4 and Chapel are much closer together which will lead to better mine density in these areas. High mine density is always a positive. Just make sure to keep in mind the spacing we talked about earlier. The last thing we are going to talk about is what to do in a pinch. For example, let's say we have an enemy light tank here overlooking this area, making it difficult for our team to move freely. There is no friendly armor in the area and our AT guy is out of rockets. Something that sometimes works is to place a mine behind the tank and then get a squad mate or teammate to drop smoke in front of the tank. The obscured vision will oftentimes get the enemy to back up and they will hit your mine. If playing as the AT role and the situation occurs, you have an extra option as grenades will cause AT mines to explode. This isn't my favorite mechanic, but I will do this as a last resort. Simply place your mine behind or next to the armor, pull out your grenade and right click to underhand it, run away, and watch the fireworks. It's important to keep in mind that this guide was presented in an ideal situation where we were not under fire and had access to the whole map. A real match will somewhat limit your options, but always keep in mind that it's better to have mines on the map than to not have mines on the map. Like my dad once told me, you can't hit the deer if you don't shoot at it. In other words, if you have mines, make sure you are using them. Using the principles presented in this guide will help to increase your chances of placing AT mines successfully and will help you and your team to win by reducing the assets that the enemy can bring to bear at any given time. Make sure to put your tips in the comments below as this guide is not exhaustive. I hope you learned something new or at least gained some fresh perspective. Check out this playlist on the top left if you're interested in seeing tactical principles being used in active matches. Or check out the video at the bottom left if you'd like to see some long-term tips on how to improve your game in Hell Let Loose. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to check the description for useful links, including a PayPal link where you can support the channel directly. As always, thank you so much for your continuing support, and see you in the next one.